If you don't see it in the life of Jesus, don't believe me. But you'll also see this pattern in the life of Jesus. Example. Jesus comes to the River Jordan. His cousin is baptizing people. Whom, by the way, he created. He created John. He called John. He's the one who spoke to Zechariah through Gabriel. Gabriel stood in the presence of the pre-existent word, Jesus, for eternity past. Jesus shows up on the shores of the Jordan. I feel the Holy Spirit now. Jesus shows up on the shores of the Jordan. Prior to John seeing him, I shared this with you a month ago. John, before he sees Jesus, he says, there's one standing among you whose sandals I'm not worthy to unloose. So John picked up on that presence. He goes, ah, he's out there. I know that presence. I jumped around in my mama's womb when he was in his mama's womb. He got near me, and I just started jumping around. He's the one who called me. He's the one who's been talking to me in the wilderness all these years. God does everything as three in one. Of course Jesus was involved in John's calling. Jesus is God. So G John's there. He's ah, there's one standing among you. In other words, there's thousands on the shore. He's going, I don't see him, but I feel him. Never shortchange feeling his presence. It precedes. You steward that sense, the sense of his presence, he'll open your eyes. So finally, Jesus shows up, and John introduces him to Israel. This is what he says. Behold the Lamb of God. Why? Why the Lamb of God? He was pointing Israel back to Abraham's words. The Lord will provide a lamb. Remember when he offered Isaac? And finally, the Lord said, don't kill your boy. What did Abraham say prior to that? The Lord will provide a lamb. Isaac said, where's the lamb? Oh, I have the wood. I'm carrying the wood. I'm carrying the cross up the mountain. It was a type and shadow. Yes. Wow. One and only son, the miracle child, about to die. And Isaac goes, wait, we've got everything we need. Where's the lamb? And Abraham says, the Lord will provide a lamb. Amen. All of a sudden, you see the lamb highlighted again in Exodus 12. Do you not? A lamb, the blood of the lamb on every house. They eat the lamb at Passover. Isaiah 53, Isaiah says this, that he was led like a lamb to slaughter. Again, we see the lamb. And John now stands at the shores. He sees Jesus. He goes, there he is. That's the one who's been announced for generations. The lamb of God who takes away the sins of the entire world. He will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and fire. Listen carefully. He first introduces him as lamb and then as the baptizer. You must have blood before you have fire. You must have sacrifice before you have oil. Salvation precedes the filling of the Spirit. Many of you in this room will have the opportunity today to give your life to Jesus. You cannot walk in the presence of God, which is life itself, by the way. Outside of his blood cleansing you. To not live under the blood is to live under the influence of the world. It's to live in darkness, the Bible says. It's to live in opposition of God. The scripture says you cannot love God in the world. So Jesus steps on the scene as the promised one who will baptize in the Holy Spirit. And fire and he walks up to John. To his creation, his cousin. And John, being a man of the spirit, the greatest in history up to that time. He goes, uh, now look. I know who you are. I've known you since I was in my mama's womb. One thing I do know. Uh, I shouldn't be baptizing you. Like, I may not know everything. But the one thing I get right now is that uh, you should baptize me. <laughs> he knew Jesus was of the ancient past. You can't get around his presence and hear his voice. 
and not recognize him when he comes your way. So he goes, uh, this isn't right. You baptize me. And Jesus says, for righteousness sake, let's do it. What was John's baptism unto? Say repentance. Did Jesus have to repent of anything? Why was he being baptized? To identify with you. To become the true replacement. The true patterned son. The true offering who could identify with us on every front. Jesus knows what it's like to be a baby. Which makes him the savior. Who can identify on all fronts. So Jesus says, no, for righteousness sake, do it. And John baptizes the Lord. Quick question. When you're baptized, does your body go up or down? Say humility. Mm. When you wash people's feet, do you go up or down? When Babel was built, did it go up or down? Up. When the devil wanted to take the throne, did he want to go up or down? The pattern of Jesus is to go low. Is to go low. To be baptized by his cousin. And then what happened? The heavens opened. And the spirit came down. It will always be that pattern. God will clothe the humble with his very glory. That's why the Bible says, don't promote yourself. He exalts, listen, the lowly, exalts the humble and resists the proud. Proud is Babel. The lowly come down. 